brothers and sisters today is another bright new day that the lord has made again and uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it as we study his word and uh in today's bible study in today's bible study we are going to answer this baffling question that people always ask have you ever heard people asking what is the rule of faith what is the rule of faith Hmm. hope you're in a comfortable seat hope you're well set get ready and let's uh, begin this Now, the phrase rule of faith does not appear in the Bible. But it was first used in a statement by the early church writer, Tertullian, in his uh, article, The Prescription Against Heretics. And uh, we understand that the rule of faith is the set of standards that define a religion. Biblical Christianity holds the Bible to be its only rule of faith. And the rule of faith may be different for different groups. In some cases, the standards are similar. In others, what may seem similar actually presents a vast and significant distinction. Now, we understand that uh, rules of faith in most religions rely on something other than or in addition to the word of God thereby denying the sufficiency of the scripture since the earliest days of Christianity this heresy has survived and has flourished and the rule of faith among the Gnostics of the first century was based on the scriptures plus a mystical knowledge gained only by those who had achieved a higher plane of enlightenment. And uh, in direct contradiction to the word of God, the Gnostics taught that salvation comes not only by grace alone, through faith alone, but but by dividing knowledge or some inner light possessed only by those elevated spirituality. You see, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, 9 that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But uh, these guys are saying that salvation does not come only by faith alone. It has to come also by some elevated spiritual people. Okay. But we know evangelical Protestants hold to the Bible alone as their rule of faith, and this reflects their belief in the doctrine of the sufficiency of Scripture, which declares that the Bible alone is adequate to guide the Christian in all manners of faith and practice. According to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, the Bible tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the scriptures are profitable to make the believer thoroughly, mark that word, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if we are thoroughly equipped by the word of God, nothing more is needed. Mm. And there are no degrees of uh, thoroughness. (laughs) To say we need something more than the the Bible as a rule of faith is only to say that we, we are made partially thoroughly. That is, you know, some people can say we are partially thoroughly equipped by the Bible and we need something more to make us completely thorough or thoroughly equipped which is not true and this this um, this same idea we see it in roman catholicism whereby they add to the bible and expand the rule of faith because catholic look to both written books and unwritten traditions thereby adding to the bible 
the declarations of popes and bishops and papal bulls and various councils and catholic catholics believe the bible is god's word yeah but it is incomplete without the addition of these writings of men likewise to mormonism rule of faith which uh, adds that the book of mormon the doctrine and covenants and the pearl of the great prince to the bible is equally inspired writings and this puts opinions views and interpretations of men on a par with the word of god also among wesleyans or followers of uh, wesley what is known as the quad literal is the rule of faith in the bible tradition reason experience this too denies the sufficiency of scripture while uh, wesley himself may have not intended that the four rules of the quadrilateral be seen as equal by adding three sources of authority to the scriptures he opened the door for misinterpretation and misunderstanding and one can just justify a belief in just about anything if that belief is based on tradition reason and and uh, of course experience and Jesus expressly forbade equating tradition with scripture as part of the rule of faith accusing the pharisees of nullifying the word of god for the sake of their traditions think about mark 7:6 to 13 the bible says he answered and said unto them well has Isaiah prophesied you of you hypocrites as it's written these people honored me with their lips but their heart is far from me let me read you verse 7 also how beat in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men for laying aside the commandment of god you hold the traditions of men as a washing of pots and cups and many other like things you do hmm. and he said unto them well full well ye reject the commandment of god that you may keep your own traditions these people they reject god and they want to keep their own traditions get in the the point here so Once the word of God is rejected as the only rule of faith and practice the door to heresy is open and the genie is not easily put back into the bottle while it may be argued that the writers of the gospel and the epistles were offering their views and interpretations as they wrote this is not the same as the declarations of the popes and bishops of catholicism or men like joseph smith The New Testament writers were moved supernaturally by the Holy Spirit who is the ultimate author author of scripture and the biblical writers you understand the Bible says in 2 Peter 1 verse 21 for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved they were moved by the Holy Ghost The Bible itself asserts that believers are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6:19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God and you are not your own? So the Holy Spirit teaches and interpret, interprets and uh, of course brings truths to mind. You just don't know things by your own your own self no he teaches things john 14:26 the bible says but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i've said unto you you see is the work of the holy spirit and likewise the same holy spirit guides us into all truth he guides us into all truth John 16 verse 13 How be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself 
but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak and he will show you things to come so all in all we have to understand for evangelical christians the the word of god and its author are the true rule of faith this is not to say that uh, preachers and teachers are are unnecessary but the doctrine of the sufficiency of scripture is a cornerstone of the evangelical rule of faith hmm. okay <laughs> that's the end of uh, today's bible lesson hope it was a blessing to you I'm looking forward and hoping to see you in the next one